Hi, this is Bill Geswitch, and today I'd like to talk to you about adding a razor component with a parameter to an MVC app. The agenda for today will be create an MVC app based on .NET Core 2.2 since most MVC apps were built in .NET Core 2.2 or before I thought it would be beneficial to take it from that version up to .NET Core 3.1 then we'll create the component and finally we'll reference a component. So let's go to Visual Studio and get started. Back in Visual Studio let's get started with a new project. So we'll choose File, New, Project. We will search for ASP.NET Core Web Application. Click on Next. Let's call this Sample MVC App and create and then let's make sure two things the ASP.NET Core 2.2 is selected if you don't have it uh, do a Google search for .NET Core SDK and you should be able to find the previous versions 2.2 and go ahead and download that and install it we'll choose MVC and we'll click on create That'll create the app. Let's just run it to see what it does. Okay, there we have it. Pretty basic app, doesn't do much, but it does work. Let's close it. And let's get started in modifying this for .NET Core 3.1. First thing we want to do, we want to right click, click on the project file. We want to click on properties for the project file and change the target framework from .NET Core 2.2 to .NET Core 3.1. Let's save that to make sure all the changes to the project file happen. And what we'll notice here is under dependencies there's a little warning triangle and under packages it says Microsoft.ASP.NET Core it's got a triangle next to it. Well the reason that triangle is there is because it's no longer needed as a package because it is part of the framework for .NET Core 3.1. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And then because this Microsoft ASP.NET Core Razor Design file is version 2.2, we don't need that anymore either. So let's re remove that. OK, so that's it for the dependencies. Everything reconciles perfectly fine. And let's first update the code so that we just bring it to 3.1 and we make it do exactly the same that it was just doing. So we go to the startup class and as we scroll down we will see that under app.useMVC we've got a green yellow squiggly and it's basically telling us that useMVC is no longer really desired we want to move forward so we're going to get rid of this but in order to get rid of this the first thing we need to do is we're going to scroll up let's add in the new services that we need so add MVC is still supported but there's a better way to do it now in 3.1 in 3.1 we want to add in services dot add controllers with views and then since there was a set compatibility we'll go ahead and do that compatibility version dot version and we'll set this to 2.2 as well all right actually we'll set this we actually need to set this to 3.0 now since we are up a version semicolon now we no longer need this. We'll go down to the app use MVC and let's add a couple of things. So now in 3.1 we need to add app.use routing as we talked about previously. And then we need to do app.use endpoints. And the endpoints will define are in a lambda expression 
and the first one will be endpoints dot map default controller route since the previous one just had the default anyway they've made it a little easier for us they've given us a specific method to call so that should be everything we can get rid of this app.useMVC and let's give it a run and see if it works okay there you have it the app works fine we've upgraded it to 3.1 now there are a lot more things that you have to look at if you have a more comprehensive project things like your link statements and some of the other things I'll put a link in the notes to to the Microsoft pages that tell you about things to consider when you're upgrading from 2.2 to 3.1 for this app we pretty much moved it up to 3.1 so what do we want to do now well let's add in the server-side blazer information and in order to do that we've seen this before services dot add server side blazer and then down here we will do an endpoints dot map blazer hub and there you have it those are the changes for the startup class the next thing we want to do is we want to add in one reference for the component and the components all can share imports so we could put the using statement within each component but rather than do that as we've seen previously we will add a shared imports file so let's add a new item to the root folder we'll make it a ra razor component and we'll call this underscore imports same as we did before once we do that we don't need this all we need to do is at using Microsoft dot ASP at core dot components dot web that's what has the add-on click in there and a couple of other directives so that's the only one we need for this video you may want to add all of the ones that we added previously, but I like to add only what I need. So I'm just going to add that one here. The next thing we want to do is we want to add the component. Well, since we're in an MVC app, there is no pages folder. And quite frankly, we're going to be adding the component uh, as a component, not as a page. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a components folder and then we will reference that from within one of the apps. So let's go ahead and create a components folder. I'll add new folder and we'll call this components. Since that is going to be referenced by the MVC pages we want to put that in the view imports and we want to put it as an at using sample MV, MVC app dot components the reason it's not showing up yet is because we don't have anything in there so it's not going to resolve we'll come back and we'll just verify that once we add something so let's go ahead and in the components folder, let's add new item, razor component, and we'll call this our good old friend counter. All right, so in counter, we're gonna just do a couple of things. Let's put a paragraph. We'll say counter colon at counter lowercase and then we will put a button and we will put at on click equals increment counter 
and then we'll close that and we'll say increment here now a couple of things we don't see the at on click it's in red it really needs to be in this brownish purple color so what I typically that means is we need to save the file as soon as we do that the import saved and the I on click now of course we don't have we still have red squigglies under the at counter and we still have them under the increment counter so let's take care of those first we will do a private int counter and we'll set that equal to zero next we'll do a private void increment counter and that won't take any parameters and we will say counter plus plus everything is resolved now so far we're looking pretty good so now what's the next step next step is to reference this component very similar to what we did in the blazer app we'll go to the let's go to the index page in the home and right under the div let's say underscore I mean not underscore we will give it a component name of component type equals type of you guessed it counter notice it references now and I'll show you why in a second render mode equals server pre-rendered there we go now if we go back to let's go back to the um, the view imports file for a second and notice before that had a red squiggly it no longer has a red squiggly it has the components we've added the components the components file counter and everything's good now there's one other thing that we need in order to make server-side blazer work and that's the reference to the javascript file for server-side blazer and what we where we put that is we will put that in the layouts file and let's go down here since this is a shared file now typically we do put script files that are being reused up in the head section for this file we need to actually put it under the render body section and that's the same script file that we used in server-side blazer app that we created previously equals underscore framework slash blazer dot server dot js we'll close that out and now if everything's been done correctly when we run it we should now see the counter component in there and there's the counter component clicking on the button gives you the increment count one last step we talked about with parameter I know I haven't talked about that previously so I thought I would talk about it here if we wanted to pass a parameter from the index page to the component itself it's actually pretty straightforward what we will do here let's go into the component first so in component we'll say there's a attribute called parameter there it is and we will say this is a public int increment amount it'll be a property and let's just set it to some value in case it's not passed in increment of amount will be equal to one if it's not sent in and then we will say counter plus equals increment amount there we go and let's do now so that's all we need to change in the counter component let's go over to the index CS HTML and here 
what we will do is we will pass in the param by saying param dash increment amount equals and let's just set it equal to 10. It does reconcile to that purple color so this it starts with param dash and then the name of the parameter and then the value that you want to pass it. Counter ex gets it, increment amount, and it will use it to increment the value of counter. Let's see if it works. Here we have the app. If I click on it, increment, we get to 10, 20, 30, 40. And there you have it. We've passed a parameter to our Razor component within an MVC app. So that's what I wanted to cover today. We started with an MVC app for .NET Core 2.2, took it to 3.1 first, added in a Blazor component, or a Razor component really, and then we added the ability for it to pass a parameter. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you.